Okay, just thought I'd make a quick video to guide you through the process of installing my builds and also to explain how the new scripts work that I've implemented for always booting into Kodi. I've seen a few questions being asked, so I figured this would be the easiest way to go around it. So first of all, you've downloaded one of my builds. This one here is RetroPie Raspberry and Kodi. So this contains um, OSMC, LibreELEC and OpenELEC, and you can just choose whichever one you want. So the first thing you want to do is extract it. Now once that's extracted, you'll have the folder here. If you go inside, there's the readme text. I do advise that you read that. But in the noobs files section, You basically want to copy everything but the OS folder onto your memory card and copy the OS folder onto a USB stick. I would always recommend doing it this way, uh, so therefore you won't lose any space on your SD card because it will retain the installation files. So I'm going to put the SD card in now. It's just a 16 gig SAN disk card. I'm going to use a program called SD Formatter. Just close that off. Now this will format the memory card to FAT32 unless it is 64 gig or over. If it is 64 gig or over, then you're going to need to use a different program. If you do a Google search, you can find all sorts of programs that will force FAT32 formatting. And Noobs requires that you have FAT32 FAT32 format on your SD card and your USB stick. So if I go to option, format size adjustment on, that's just if you've used it as a, um, so I've used this memory card in my Raspberry Pi before, Windows won't pick up on any Linux X4 partitions, anything like that. So it only recognizes the FAT32 partition on there, which is 120 megabytes in size. By changing that, it's going to force it to expand it to the whole size of the memory card. I'll click on format. Just click OK to them. And that's done. So that's the memory card ready. 14.4 gig. It's a 16 gig memory card. It always comes out a bit lower than 16 gig. And I can exit out of there. So now, there's my blank memory card ready to go. I want to take all these files aside from the OS folder, copy them onto the memory card. And that's that done. So I'll eject that. And that's the SD card ready. So now I want to do exactly the same, but only for the OS folder on my memory stick, so I'll plug that in. Again, go to SD Formatter, or whatever formatting program you're using. The size is already down as 14.4 gig, it is a 16 gig memory card, so I don't need to put the size adjustment on, but just to show you again, that's where you would do it, and click Format. This will ensure that the file system is formatted to FAT32 on the memory stick as well, because that is a requirement of noobs. So that's that done. So if I open the USB stick, so I just want to copy the OS folder. Now it's up to you, either copy the whole OS folder on this particular build, um, because, like I say, I have actually included three different versions of Kodi in there, OSMC, OpenELEC, and LibreELEC, alongside RetroPie and Raspbian. So it's entirely up to you. If you copy them all over, they will all appear in the Noobs uh, installation screen, and you can just tick which one you want, or delete off the ones that you don't want now, and only copy the ones that you do want. So I'm just going to leave them all on, and drag that whole OS folder on the USB stick. It's about 2 gigs, so it's going to take a 
a moment or two. Okay, so now it's finished copying over. And if we look into the USB stick, you can see they're all there. Now, at this point, if you wanted to change any of the partition sizes, so for argument's sake, if you wanted RetroPie to take up the whole amount of spare space, and Raspbian and, say, LibreLeg to only have a certain amount of space, now this is the point where you need to change it before you install. So, for example, I've set all of these... Well, every, everything that's in here is set to share this the remaining space evenly between them. So by that, I mean if I go into the actual directory for the operating system and go into partitions.json, in here, got want maximized set to true. I go back out and open the lec. Go back into partitions JSON. Want maximized true. So if I wanted to change that, so I only allocated say 1.5 gig, I can change the partition size nominal to 1.5 gig. So that's in megabytes, 1,500, and then I would need to set want maximized to false. Save that before you install it for any of the partitions that you want to change and it will remember it. So you'll have to bear in mind that open the lec here is going to take at least 441 megabytes of space when it uh, is being installed so you don't want to put it any lower than that. So I'm not going to save that, I'm just going to leave it the way it was. Yep. So that's it copied all over the USB stick. I'm going to reject that now. And now we're ready to put it into the, the Pi itself and install it on Noobs. So I've put the memory card in and the USB stick into the Pi and boot it up into the Noobs installer. Now I would always recommend that you unplug your Ethernet cable um, and then if you do that you will only ever see my builds in there otherwise it's going to connect to the internet and find other things out there. The Raspbian image, OSMC, Windows 10 etc etc. So I always prefix mine with multi-boot or dual boot or whatever it might be. And also, if you look along the right, you'll see that these are actually on the memory stick. Because it's got the memory stick icon there, rather than the network cable icon. So I'm going to pick LibreLeg, multi-boot, Raspberry multi-boot, and RetroPi and click install, it'll always ask you this, just say yes, and that's it. Now this is going to take probably around about half an hour, due to the large installation files, so I will fast forward this and catch up with you soon. Right then, we're just about finished installing here. It's been about half an hour. And then you'll get this pop-up message, just click OK. And now we can choose which operating system we want to boot into. So I'm going to go ahead and choose LibreLeg. And it'll reboot into that operating system. And there we are. So 
I've set it up so in the program section here you'll have RetroPy and Raspbian. All you've got to do is click on one of either of them and it'll boot straight into that system. But with my new script, what it's going to do is it's going to search for the partition it needs for that particular operating system. And once it finds it, it'll then boot into it and it'll lock in whatever the partition number was. So it'll only do that initial searching once for each of these two systems. Now I have also set up my website as a source here. Dot multiboot pi is at the top there. So if you ever uninstalled it by mistake, you just need to go back in here and there's Raspberry and RetroPy. Now they'll work on both triple boot and dual boot setups because it's searching for the partition when you first run it. So go down here and run Raspbian. And it's rebooting into Raspbian. And there we have it. So again, I've installed the Cairo Dock uh, launcher down here with various applications on there. Up here, we'll have a shortcut to RetroPy and a shortcut to Kodi. And again, I've set up my new scripts on there. So when you click it for the first time, it will have to search for the partition um, and then install it. And then once it's found it once, it will stay locked in for want of a better word. I've also installed them into the start menu. So under games, you've got RetroPy. And under sound and video, you've got Kodi. Now in system tools, you'll find enable always boot to Kodi. That won't work until you've run Kodi at least once because it won't know what the partition is that it needs to assign to boot into that operating system. So even if you did click it, nothing would happen because it, it just the files aren't there yet that it needs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to boot into Kodi again. And now I'm going to go straight back into Raspbian again. So because I've run the script once to go into Kodi, um, it now knows what partition the Kodi is installed to. So if I go to Menu, System Tools, and choose enable always boot the Kodi, that's going to make it so, well, it'll always boot into Kodi after I've, from any reboot or shutdown from within Raspbian. Now, you will have to do this on RetroPy as well, if you want the whole system to boot back to Kodi on any reboot or startup. And what's going to happen when I click this, it's going to perform the script that it needs. It's just a little startup script that uh, allocates the correct partition for the next boot up and it's going to remove the enable always boot the Kodi option here and replace it with a disable always boot the Kodi option. Now it does that straight away and what the Cairo doc does it picks up on the fact that a new application has been installed and it'll ask if you want to run the new application which would be the disable script so you just need to click no because obviously you don't want to become an, an endless loop of enabling and disabling. So I'll show you what I mean. Click on that. Now that's the script installed. So now it'll always boot directly back into Kodi every time you shut down or reboot in Raspbian. There's the disable always boot the Kodi script that's been installed. Just going to press X on that. So I don't want to run it, obviously. If I go to system tools, you'll see that's now disable always boot the Kodi. And you would just click that to uh, return back to the normal button uh, functionality. I'm just going to show you. If I shut down now and reboot, it should go back into Kodi. So now I'm going to go into RetroPy. So again, this is my new script, which is going to search for the RetroPy partition this time. Uh, once it finds it, it'll copy all the relevant files it needs and it'll stay that way all the time. So if I click on it, 
There we go. It's found the partition and now it's loading it. So here we are booting into ReproPy for the first time. So I will need to set up the keyboard because it's the first time I've booted into this. And there we have it. So you'll have Kodi, Raspbian and the RetroPie menu. Now inside the RetroPie menu is where you'll find the always boot to Kodi script. But you will need to have rebooted into Kodi at least once, well, launched Kodi from RetroPie at least once before that option will be available to you. And that's just because at the moment it doesn't know what partition Kodi's on. So I'll go back out of there, into Kodi, launch Kodi. It's found the partition. Now it's rebooting into Kodi, as expected. So I just want to go straight back into RetroPie again to show you that that new option will be sitting there now. So we're back into RetroPie. Go in the retro my menu, you'll see enable always boot decoder is there. So I click on that, the screen will fade out, providing there's no errors, it'll just go straight back into emulation station again. Now it'll stay as enable always boot decoder until you restart emulation station. Um, that is because the ROM lists aren't refreshed until you exit and go back into it again. So if I just exit out by pressing F4, you don't have to do this, but I just wanted to show you. And then go back in. Now if I go to the RetroPie menu, this should have changed to disable. There it is there. So that's if you want to restore your normal boot functionality again. So now if I was to restart, it would take us straight into Kodi again. So there's your Raspbian. Again, it's going to search for the partition, find it, and then boot into it. And then that will be locked in for next time. It won't need to do any sort of searching at all. And there we are back into Raspbian again. So that's about it really, um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, be sure to check out my website www.multibootpie.com and other than that, I'll see you next time.